what's up guys, Betty here, and I am very excited because we have just received a load of brand new information on Call of Duty Warzone Season 2, as well as Black Ops, including zombies, content, multiplayer, but for Warzone, I'm talking new operators, new weapons, secret modes and events, and also something that I'm personally really excited about seeing is new reactive blueprints, which are going to be so much better than tracer rounds, but I'm going to explain all of that in this video so you do not miss out on a single thing as Activision has just dropped a load of brand new information on the Activision blog. Also, if you are new to the channel and are excited about season two, make sure to hit that subscribe button and 72% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel. But right on the screen right now is the season two roadmap. So this is everything that's coming in season two, which kicks off on February 25th. But let's go through the Activision blog. I'm going to highlight the main things that I'm really excited about and I think are going to be useful to you as a Warzone player and also touch on the other bits and pieces that are being added as well. But if we scroll down, you get the date and everything you need to know about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Warzone, which is coming February 25th. It kind of starts off by showing you the roadmap, which we can just have a quick look at. In the top left-hand corner of this, it's quite exciting because a dark wave approaches the Danks, which is making me think that there is going to be an event going on because... There was loads of talk at the start of Warzone of events happening. We got the first one when Black Ops Cold War got revealed. Uh, and this is kind of hinting towards this because on Rebirth Island, you saw a ship going away. And just fingers crossed, this is going to be a huge part of the season, which is going to be very exciting to kind of follow um, as it kind of unravels itself as we go throughout the season. Uh, you've then got new multiplayer maps. So you've got Apocalypse, 6v6, Scalava, Mansion for Gunfight. But also, new Warzone modes. That's going to be awesome. So Resurgence Extreme and Exfiltration. And then you've got a new score streak for multiplayer, which is a death machine. We've been having that in Warzone for a while now with the minigun. Uh, and then Gun Game and Stockpile as new, new modes. Personally, Gun Game is one of my all-time favorite modes. I used to play it so much, along with one in the chamber back in the day. Um, the new Zombies experience is the thing that's been leaked recently, which is Outbreak. So if you're a Zombies fan, you're going to love that. Uh, then we've got a new challenge event for Outbreak as well. Well within Warzone uh, and all the new weapons, which I'm going to go through, as well as new operators, new prestige levels, and all and the battle pass as well. Uh, first bit in the blog, all right. For those of you that like the lore within Warzone, um, we kind of saw this during the uh, the cinematic trailer earlier during the week, um, which kind of just leaves the final question: is where in the world is Adler? Uh, but we saw Frank Woods going through the jungles. Um, and like it's going to be interesting because that's also where you kind of see the operators, which we now get to see. And I want to hear from you in the comments about this because personally, even though I'm excited about get getting new operators within Warzone season, like Call of Duty season two, there's no reason to use anyone but Rose, because why would you when you can just blend into the shadows? If you're looking for a competitive advantage and not necessarily what looks cool and makes you laugh or you like the, the story behind the operator, is if you want a competitive advantage, you use Rose so you can lie on some dustbin bags and be invisible. It's just, I, I hope personally they make some changes going into season two on the skin because um, it is a little bit broken. I'm not going to lie. But you've got Naga, who's part of the Warsaw Pact. It looks pretty cool. One of the big things I'm always looking at is the weapons, though, because this is kind of giving us a little insight into some of the new reactive blueprints and what they're going to do with the weapons, because it's something I really like, uh, but it's just got like a bullet bandana. He looks like a bit of a badass. Uh, we've then got uh, Maxis as well um, right here with that with that with another reactive blueprint. Was That's the uh, the Krig, isn't it? That looks pretty cool. Um, then we've got uh, Wolf, who is my favorite person. We saw that him during the cinematic trailer. Looks really cool. And then we've also got Rivas with the new crossbow that is coming out during the season as well. As, as you can see, Wolf in the background using the death machine there. Uh, personally, four cool new operators. I don't think any of them are wearing all black. Um, so they're not going to blend into the shadows, especially uh, Naga, if I'm honest. He seems a bit of a colorful character who might stick out. Uh, unless they make the changes to Rose. And then it's going to be awesome to get to use these again but uh so i always get really excited about is when new weapons are added into the game because it mixes up the meta it offers new opportunities for some best loadouts and these weapons definitely do that especially as the first two that come into the game are an assault rifle and an SMG, which is the two most used weapon categories and really change things up especially if they're meta weapons which i personally think the assault rifle 
could potentially be. And hear me out here, because you can see it in the hands of this operator right here. And it looks like the OG Galil. Like we've got the CR56A Max in Modern Warfare, which is like a modern Galil. This is like the 80s version, and it's called the Farah 83. This fully automatic assault rifle is a heavyweight among its peers, as it claims one of the fastest fire rates in its class and outstanding effective range for solid damage. Now that to me, sounds like the perfect weapon for Warzone. Like fast fire rates and solid damage outputs traditionally are metal weapons. Like look at all the metal weapons over the, over the year, from the Growl to the M4 to the FAR, either have a solid damage rate and also a very, very good rate of fire, like the M13 as well. So this potentially could do it. All depends on the recoil pattern, but I'm optimistic. The SMG, the LC-10, has a chance. To me, the first instinct I get off, it, off of it is it's like an MP7, but it's a well-rounded full auto submachine gun. The LC-10 grants close quarters combat operators the ability to stretch fights out into the mid-range on a smaller, agile weapon platform thanks to its solid accuracy and extended effective damage range. Although its damage per shot is on the lower end of the SMG spectrum, its above average fire rate and lower recoil can prove to be a deadly combination. Like I said, that sounds a lot like the MP7. It's not going to dominate at close range because of that lower damage output. So the MP5s and the MAC-10s are still going to be very good. However, for like kind of middle range SMG, if you're using a sniper, it could work really well because you're going to have that mobility still. A lot of people that are running the far right now might want to switch to this because it's still going to operate and be good in those medium range gunfights, uh, which you kind of want when you're using a sniper in Warzone. Um, next, we've got a couple special weapons. We've got the machete. I personally don't ever change my melee weapon. I don't think I have ever used the melee weapon Warzone. Um, but if you like those, you've got the machete and then you've got the E-tool. Um, but, right, the next two are pretty cool because... We've got the R1 Shadow Hunter, which is the new crossbow. This crossbow's simple and lightweight design allows for great handling and quieter eliminations. If an operator doesn't prefer its iron sights, they can still shoot accurately from the hip in close quarters or opt to attach one of several optics. That to me, if it, if it works anything like the crossbow from Modern Warfare and can be fired accurately from the hip, it could be a really good secondary weapon because you could just quickly fire a shot off and if it's a one-shot kill, um, it could get really annoying. It could be like the new kind of throwing knife within Warzone. But uh, I know a lot of people are going to be excited about the sniper that is coming mid-season because from the description, before we get hands-on, it sounds ridiculous. And it is the ZRG 20mm sniper. Built for sharpshooters who need power to eliminate targets at extremely long ranges. This bolt action sniper rifle boasts a faster bullet velocity than any other weapon in its class, as well as the ability to eliminate operators with a single shot to the head, chest, or shoulders in exchange for a slower fire rate. So if you're accurate with your shots and you're holding down a position, you're just going to be downing people like no tomorrow. Its reload speeds are among the fastest in the category, allowing snipers to quickly change out magazines when faced with multiple hostile forces. Uh, and then you can obtain all these weapons throughout the season the same way that we have in the past. You're going to be able to either buy the blueprint um, or you complete a challenge to unlock the weapon. And then also with the um, the Farah, uh, you get that at level 15 of the Season 2 Battle Pass. And then the LC-10, you get at Tier 31. So pretty easy to unlock and completely free to everyone who plays the game, uh, which is always a nice thing to do. Now we've got Zombies Expands in Outbreak. Now this has been leaked and talked about over the past couple of days, uh, but effectively large-scale zombies. So the ne next chapter of the Dark Ether story takes the agents of Requiem Deep into the heart of Russia. Um, so yeah, it, this, if you're a big fan of zombies, I personally don't play zombies that much, but if you're a fan, this is going to be awesome. Just large scale zombies, larger scale maps. Um, and there, as always, it's going to be filled with Easter eggs and things to do for the storyline, which is going to be amazing. They're going to be dropping more information about that in the next couple of days. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye out. Like Miss Dalek JD covers zombies really well. Um, he's a good friend of mine, so definitely uh, check him out for more zombies information because there's loads. There's like new field upgrades. You've got new ammo mods for it you've got new skill tier trees and loads of stuff so if you're a zombies fan which you'd expect with Treyarch being like the makers of zombies and it's like it's it's almost as big as either multiplayer or warzone or bigger uh in some cases so definitely uh check out mr dalek jd for that because he'll know everything about zombies then we've got four multiplayer maps we've got apocalypse which is the new 6v6 map 
which is Welcome to the Lao Jungle cartel base in the heart of the Golden Triangle, Apocalypse. As Perseus forces are rumored to be hiding key intel in their stronghold in Laos, uh, the CIA's finest approach the village ready to extract any, any evidence they can on the Nova 6 supply line and Adler's whereabouts. It's just all adding to the storyline a little bit more, but this small to medium-sized map is built for aggressive operators, funneling action under stilted bridge, bridge buildings and through the temple fortress, giving cha give chase to the enemy through the buildings and temple, making sure not to be too distracted from the glint of gold being loaded into the trucks on the main road. And like you can kind of see the truck like there with the uh, with Wolf manning the gunner. You've then got Golova, which is a multi for a multi team, um, which looks pretty cool. Like some of the maps look cool. Mansion two v two for gunfights, uh, but yeah. My, and then you've got Miami Strike Strike as the next one. Now the modes are something I am very excited about because we've got Gun Game, one of my favorite modes of all time, and then you've got Stockpile, which is a little bit like Grind from Modern Warfare, where you just kind of kill confirmed, collect the tags, and then put them into a single position to get the points. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I'm really liking a lot of the kind of the style and look of season two, actually. It's kind of a very like tribal look. Like, look look at this. He, he does look badass. Even though he's a very bright character skin with like the colorings of his clothing, um, he's not going to be as OP as Rose unless there is a full dark out version. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. You've then got Hardpoint for multi-team as well. New tools of the trade. That's the death machine that we saw. Uh, it's kind of quite, you know, it's quite iconic in the Black Ops series, but we've already got the minigun in Warzone, so that will probably won't be coming to Warzone. Uh, you've got a new vehicle with sedan. Within Outbreak, operators can find an old yet surprisingly reliable Eastern Block sedan to help them survive. Featuring enough room for the whole squad, this new vehicle is great for getting to the next objective quickly or performing a drive-by or a ramming charge on the undead hordes. So probably not going to Warzone, even though that'd be quite cool to see. Um, it's kind of bit kind of PUBG esque that, but I'm so I actually really excited to play Outbreak. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, then you've got a vehicle like Truck Launch Week, which is also for Outbreak. They are not coming to Warzone. Then you've got Season Challenges, a fresh set of 20 multiplayer challenges. Same thing that we had in Season 1. Um, so a good way to earn experience and also some cool calling cards as you go. And here we go. The four new prestige icons. Let me know which one you think is the best one down in the comments below. Um, I'm personally going to have to go, right, for the snake head. I think that looks really cool. This one's also really cool, the helmet. But I'm, I'm going to go for this one out of these four. Um, uh, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. But effectively exact same as the previous season up to level 200 to get the master prestige calling cards um, but four new prestiges and here we go warzone content okay i'm i'm really excited about this in addition to new weapons and operators from black ops cold war within season two and a fresh loot pool Yes, that, that's also a great thing with any, with any new season of Warzone. New floor loot uh, is going to be cool. Warzone receives new and shocking points of interest to explore in two modes that shake up the traditional battle royale formula. So new points of interest. Across Verdansk, there are a number of points of interest I discover or more fully explore, all advancing Warzone's story while offering new places to scavenge and scrap for survival. Last sighted off the coast of Rebirth Island, recent intel suggests that the cargo tanker Vo Vo Vodia Noi? I'm 100% saying that wrong, but has gone missing at sea. However, recent visuals have identified a vessel matching the description heading towards the port of Verdansk. Operators within the vicinity are recommended to exercise extreme caution as the ship is carrying unknown cargo and its crew are not able to be contacted. That does not sound good, right? Unknown cargo and the, and the crew can't be contacted. That is, that is not going to be good. Meanwhile, with Infidance, something major is beginning to rumble deep underground. So that's been going on for year, like for months now. Remember when we kind of saw the shadows under the lake at Dam, and uh, we thought that was all something. Although other reports on these new locales are still classified, we'd advise to explore these areas at your own risk. Effectively, go to prison on day one. There is going to be something within prison down below. It's in all the artwork. You can see it with the ship. Something is going on at prison, so that is where we're going to be landing uh, as soon as Season 2 kicks off. You've then got a new game mode, Exfiltration. Uh, it's about time that Exfil Choppers arrives before the circle collapse fully closes in. During an Exfiltration battle, Royale, a, port a portable radio crackles into life, coming online somewhere in Verdansk. The operator who secures this radio and holds onto it for a sufficient period of time automatically wins the game for them, or their squad in non-solo modes. To ensure their Exfil isn't by the book, anyone holding the radio is marked on the attack map as if they were 
were under a most wanted contract, also known as a HVT or high value target, with all operators also receiving intel on how much longer the current radio holder has until they win. Other than this new win condition, the same battle royale rules apply, expect a circle collapse and a winner to be determined by the last operator standing. That's gonna create some mad scenarios. Imagine just holding a building in downtown or the top of a hospital and you've just got every operator in the danks running at you. That's gonna be really cool. Um, it's gonna create some like amazing moments if you're that team holding off for the win. You've then got new game mode, Rebirth Island Resurgence Extreme. So Resurgence just received some reinforcements. High Octane Respawn Enabled Resurgence Mode will be taken to the extreme during Season 2, upping the max player count in a limited... Okay, that's going to make it quite cool. Uh, it's, personally, I only play Rebirth if it's to warm up, um, but that could be a nice thing to do for if you want to do that. So when are we dropping Season 2 timing? So it's going to be... We'll receive a rolling update on February 23rd, scheduled between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. And Warzone will receive a rolling update on February 24th. Along with kicking off a new season of content, these updates will also include quality of life improvements and bug fixes. Please ban all the hackers and cheaters to the current Black Ops Cold War Warzone games. So yeah, so it's pretty much the same thing. So season two, Black Ops Cold War and Warzone content is expected to be available at between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Pacific time on February 24th. So that's going to be like 7 a.m. GMT on the Thursday. But there we have it. Warzone season two. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm so excited. New weapons are going to be awesome. New reactive blueprints and that dark wave approaches for Vidanx is going to be awesome. Subscribe for new. Smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed and I will see you next time.